Do you have a personal favourite game that you've composed for? And if so, what made arranging the music for it so special? Um, so, um, <clears throat> I guess it's I guess it's Time Splitters, well, the Time Splitters series. Um, um, Time Splitters 1 was probably my f- the favourite that I composed for yeah. because um, I felt like I had something to prove because it was a new company when we set up Free Radical and um, it was like, well, we better not muck this one up. <laughs> so so it, there was a lot riding on it. Um, <clears throat> listening back over, you know, over now where the years have gone, I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but it was the one that I had the most kind of... Um, good feelings doing because um, yeah. if I listen back to it now I'd probably say oh Time Splits 2 is better and then Time Splits 3 I, I, I enjoyed doing that even though I didn't no I didn't enjoy doing that <laughs> I enjoyed the music I wrote but um, um, at the time when I was doing TS2 I, I thought I was done I thought, oh, these, these songs are rubbish they're not what's going on um, but that's it's the way things happen at times. So, yeah. so from an experience, really enjoyed Transmit as One. Transmit as One is the soundtrack I always listen to. Probably. Right. <laughs> okay. Since the days of chip tunes, a lot has changed in the way the music is developed for video games. What do you feel has been the biggest shift? Oh, blimey. Um, well, I mean, I suppose the. To my mind, the biggest change is there's no limitations anymore. I mean, chip tunes you had, you were you were constricted by memory, very much so, and also depending on the hardware you were working with, you had channel restrictions. So you know, the, the classic is the Spectrum One to start with, and then uh, going up to I think three when it when the Spectrum Plus came out and Commodore 64 obviously three maybe four if you could squeeze a sample out of it etc <laughs> um, etc et you know, you know, you know yeah. where I'm going but you know you, you had to you had to have you had to find tricks to try and get the best out of what you had which was very limited um, now with there being hardly any limitations you have to almost uh, create your own otherwise you go crazy because you don't know what like, you, know, you can have everything so yeah. you have to you have to have some set of almost a set of rules uh, well that, that's that's how I go about it I to, um, <clears throat> create a sound palette that you're going to go back to for a game so it has a sound you know it has yeah. its own sort of signature otherwise um yeah, the, it, it's, it's, it's too easy just to go off in all kinds of directions. Yeah. How, how much did the actual Super Nintendo have for holding memory? I think something like a uh, uh, kilobyte. Maybe? It was 40 kilobyte. Uh, yeah, 40 kilobytes. Um, eight, eight sound channels. Um, so yes, not very much at all. I think I say it must have been uh, pretty difficult putting all of like Killer Instinct onto that. You should have come to my talk because <laughs> I went through it in quite nerdy, boring detail <laughs> of how it got from the coming up to the um, to, to the snares. Um, yeah, it was all about what we what we used to call back in those days single cycle loops. So the the, the actual samples of, a, of an instrument were you know, like bytes. Yeah, and that was the only way around you could do it. But I was so restricted with what I what I had to play with back in those days that it wasn't how I wanted it to be. So if I had the time, um, I've got the inclination. <laughs> if I had the time, that's what I'd love to do. Yeah, I'd love to re- recompose all that with you know with uh, my modern tech. Well, excuse me, modern technology. Basically. Yeah. Okay, which is your favourite track from basketball? Blimey, why don't you ask me that? <laughs> um, I sp- uh, it's, it's, it's really cheesy, but I do like Simeon Acres because. Um, the banjo. The banjo, yeah. one, yes. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, that was kind of. I was, that was what I would call the breakthrough of that project because I was. The game suddenly was coming together. So, um, whereas before I was writing music on spec, i.e., you know, 
well, we think it's going to be this, we think it's going to be that. So I was writing yeah. tunes and, and um, not seeing them in game, so I didn't really know what it was going to be like. And that one, I was writing, little, I was writing like a few bars, putting it into the uh, N64 and playing the game with it. Yeah. And I know Robin came in and he said, that's my favourite track of yours. So, right, okay, well, I better carry on with that one. And um, no, no, I just, I just really, yeah, that was, that was good fun. And a great track. <laughs> uh, uh, which bands or artists inspired you uh, in your sort of um, writing process? Or... Um, back in the day, I don't know if it, if it shows through, but I used to love Orbital. Oh, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> it was something, something about them that used to make me want to write music which um, yeah I don't know if if I inadvertently copied them <laughs> I mean I've, I've obviously done that for many many things in the past um, I mean I, I love industrial music and golf music and stuff but I, I'm you know obviously not sort of tipped my hat to that kind of stuff wherever I could yeah. um, much to Rare's annoyance. <laughs> I remember once. I, I remember once. Um, it was. It was uh, before Grant took over Donkey Kong 64. I think I was in. The, I was going to do it for some reason. Um, and I remember Simon Farmer, the sort of guy at the time, said, um, "We can't have any of your Depeche Mode beats in it, Grant." <laughs> so, <laughs> right. I thought that's a very funny thing to say. Um, um, I'm to think who else. Um, yeah, it, it, it would vary. It'd be whoever. I mean, whatever I was listening to at the time. I mean, Orb- Orbital was obviously quite a, an old reference, but um, I really like their um, their. I think it's their Doctor Who theme. Yeah, next that was that was an excellent track. Yeah, no, I just I just yeah. It's, there's something very atmospheric about it, even though it's it's instrumental and you know. Sort of, Electronica and stuff. Yeah. Um, can you describe your process of writing music? And has it changed much since you began? I wish I could, because if I knew what it was, <laughs> I could sit down every day and write music. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a process. Um, it's it's a case of either staring at a screen long enough until something happens, which is usually about. 4.30 at night having spent all day avoiding doing anything um, I have little fits and starts of, of where I get to write yeah. stuff um, and that will usually be first thing in the morning before anyone's um, got hold of me and bothering me about stuff Yeah. or last thing at night when everyone's buggered off home um, no it's, it's it, I, I, I wish I knew <laughs> I mean, a lot of ideas I get when I'm sort of not doing, not writing music, as opposed to if I sat down to write it, nothing. But if I'm doing something else like hoovering or or, t- or walking or, or something, you're struck by light. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly I have an idea and I think, yes, yes, yeah, that'll do. I'll write it down quickly <laughs> and then go back to the office the next day and and, 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 and work on that. Yeah. Good way to do it. That's how I used to do it right. uh, when I was a travelling musician. Yeah. Uh, King K rules theme in Donkey Kong Land to Sim- Simeon Acres. Sorry, what? Uh, King K rules theme in Donkey Kong Land to Simeon Acres in Glasgow. Um, are there any tunes that you've made for the previous game that never came to light but finally got a chance to appear in in like another title? Oh, right. So is that the one that was in Donkey Kong? La- right. Okay. Hang on. Let me backtrack. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I, I need to ask Robin about that because I think they removed it from when they did the. Uh, this is not for the <laughs> <laughs> thinking loud. So when they did the rare replay, yeah, I think they had to take that tune out because it was in DK Land. Oh, okay. Um, but I never got to. I, I, I don't know if I think Robin knows, but I asked him and he said he'd find out what happened, but I forgot. Not <laughs> Um, so, before I answer the question, which I'm going to have to ask you again, ask you about it again, 
I did that through laziness. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, I can't remember why I did it either, because I wrote DK Land first, and then for whatever reason, I think, okay, I think what it was, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just rambling now. It's my grandpa <laughs> Simpson. <laughs> I f- Last call went through a period where the stampers didn't like it. They didn't think it was cute enough. And it was always um, uh, Chris Stamper's idea. That was like his his idea was to do Blast Call years and years before we did it. Yeah. And <clears throat> I don't think it was what he wanted. So <clears throat> we went through this period of, of oh, it's, it's too dark, it's not cute enough. And I thought, all right, <laughs> I'll show you cute. Yeah. <laughs> so I took a tune from DK Land and turned it into whatever it's called on Blast. <laughs> I'll probably just call it Bonus Level or something like that. Um, what was the question? <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ed. <laughs> it's fine. Um, um, so from... Uh, the King K. Rule theme in Donkey Kong Land to Simeon Acres in Blast Court. Right. Are there any tunes that you've made pre or, um, for a previous game that never came to light but finally got a chance to appear? Oh, I see. Right. Well, we're going back to um, Scotland the Brave, which I probably shouldn't have. Shouldn't, I mean, it's out and it, people have found out about it anyway because it was in a. I think it was on an E3 video or something. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it was originally. originally wrote it for Perfect Dark and we didn't use it. Um, and I uh, just forgot about it all but then yeah when it came to time to make this future perfect it, it struck me that, that one time yeah. when I was on holiday in Cologne and I thought actually that would, that would suit it really well and um, yeah I resurrected that and I was really happy with it and so far I haven't been sued by Microsoft on it <laughs> <laughs> um, um, there's qu- there was quite a lot for Jet Force I wrote that, that just got dumped. Yeah. Which I was I'd like I'd like to um, I'd love to have used, um, but whether it ever makes I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. It's, it, there's a lot of stuff I've written that has not seen the light of day. Um, but it's just waiting for that situation where it suits you know it suits the project and stuff. Um, whether that ever happens you never know but you know sometimes I, I listen back to stuff that was unfinished for whatever reason or not used or maybe the game was canned and it's like oh man it's a shame but it's at the same, same at the same time when you're writing on a new project um, you've got a whole load of new ideas and a new new direction and stuff and it's it's not always suiting to go back and say, well, you know, that, that we can take that from 10 years ago and it works. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, uh, in that one particular case for the um, Scotland, Brave, Scotland the Brave, it just struck me that it was a good one to use. You know. um, given the chance, which gaming series would you love to compose for? That's a good question. Um, <coughs> I'd love to do a. I'd love. I don't know if I could do it because it's pretty freaking jazzy. But I'd love to do an outrun game. Outrun. Oh. Because um, and I haven't really followed. I me. Mean, I, I, when I say outrun, I mean the original one. You know, with uh, um, magical sound shower and all those sort of things. Because um, I just love that soundtrack and um, yeah if I could if I could do that that it, would be, it'd be amazing so okay over the course of your career you've worked on a lot of games that have gained a lot of uh, and you've gained a lot of experience doing so are there any songs you've made from earlier days that you either cringe at here and now <laughs> no they're all brilliant what are you talking about <laughs> um, oh loads absolutely loads um and if, if I didn't, I think that would be there'd be something wrong with my brain because the idea is you you improve as you go along. 
Um, I've I've definitely said this before. I, I don't know if it was in an interview or not, but there was um, a piece in Blast Call, which was the shuttle launch, which I absolutely cringe whenever I hear it. And even when I wrote it, I thought, what am I doing? You know, <laughs> stuck it in anyway. Um, um, I don't know. I'd have to re-listen to a lot of stuff. There was there's a there's a lot of stuff that didn't make Killer Instinct which I'm glad didn't make Killer Instinct I wrote about 70 pieces for that first game yeah um, four of which we used in the, in the final game but um, some of those are stinkers so yeah um, too many to mention I think uh, and some you know, some some worthy that they shouldn't ever be heard again but others just because you know, you learn as you go along, and also <clears throat> your tastes change. You know? Yeah. I mean, um, you'd never. I think it'd be. Although one of your previous questions about was redoing Blasco, I'd love to redo it, but I'd never write music like that again. And that's not to say I don't like it, but it's just you know you, you, you change over yeah. time. So, yeah. Um. <clears throat> If you could pick one song that you'd want fans to identify with you, which one would it be? Remember me this way. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh God, I don't know. Um, um, it's, I mean, <clears throat> if anyone knows a, compo- a composer, they always have their, you know, their favourites. Yeah. I wouldn't want to impose that on anyone, but God, Bennett, that's a tricky one. Um, I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, possibly Siberia from Transporters 2. Oh, good track. Um, but I don't know, Ed, that's a really contentious one. That's a really tricky to answer. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't, I can't do that one. Okay, then. What's an important bit of advice for any aspiring composers that are trying to get into the industry? Wait until I'm dead! <laughs> <laughs> then you can have your time. Get, get, get off my plate. Yeah, get off my <laughs> um, um, Don't be too... All right. This is... And this is not meant to be. This is not meant to sound cliche, but it will. <laughs> like, um, don't be too precious about your work, because what you think is ace, someone else might think is, is garbage. Yeah. Um, you can't please everyone. You know, there's always going to be some people that like what you do and some people that don't and think it's it's rubbish. But yeah, if you're not too precious, um, and someone says. Well, that's not what we're looking for. Can you do this? Then, if you're flexible, you've got a lot more chance to get on in this industry. Because yeah. um, if you're, uh, <clears throat> say, for instance, oh, I, I only like doing this one style of music, then you're going to starve. Yeah. You, know, you have to, you have to be pretty open to, to even to doing stuff that you might not like that much like it might be a style that really isn't you but if you're if if you're willing to study that style and you know absorb it yeah and, and write for it then um, I think the doors will be opening more more than they, they they would they would be if you were just you know steadfast well I do this I do all country so that's <laughs> that's what this game should have <laughs> Actually, one more question, which I forgot to write down. Um, I think I sent it to you in an email. Uh, I don't know if you saw it or not. Um, I, I remember reading somewhere ages ago in a Nintendo magazine that there was, I think it was Time Splitters 2 on the Game Boy? Was... Oh, Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Yes, there was. Um, yeah, and all those tracks were were converted to, um, to tracker files. So I think we had, I think it was eight channels again. Oh, we're back to the snares again. But um, we had to squeeze everything right down, and um, it sounded terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was, yeah. it was Game Boy Advance. Um, 
and we had the finished game. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, it was a sideways scroller. Oh, okay. it, it was. Um, it was pretty far removed from time splitters, but it was at the time when um, you'd get you'd get your console version, and then you get a, a GBA version. Yeah. Um, and we were in talks with Midway, who were kind of you know big in apart from, next to Nintendo, they were sort of the guys who were publishing a lot of yeah. GBA games. Um, <clears throat> it just didn't come to anything. I think the time had passed, kind of thing. So yeah. it was put on the shelf and then just forgotten about. Yeah, I remember reading it. And I just had to clarify: was I imagining reading it? Or no, was no, it real? No, it's, it's, it's out there somewhere. Oh right, that's cool. Cool. Oh, well, if you've got any follow-ups, just email me. Yeah. <laughs>